Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving our praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Chakodash. Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shah is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world know as Jesus Christ. And I want to give double honors to all the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, whom we learn this truth from. And I want to say Shalom to the Holy Lake. And I got this article right here, and it says conspiracy theorists predict dark omens after bloody horses run through London. You know, and you know, just watching this, it made me think about you know Revelation six when we go into all the different horses. I mean, you know, this is all spiritual, but hey, uh, we know that we're in the end times by the signs that our Lord Yahweh Shah has been showing us. You see, He give us a list in uh, Matthew twenty four. In the third chapter, I mean, 24th chapter, uh, starting in verse 3. You see, when the disciples was asking them what's going to be signs, said so they're going to be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, pestilence, and famines. And we see all these things uh, taking place wars, rumors of war. A World War Three is right around the corner. So the mark of the beast is as well, man, because we know that has to be implemented first. So a uh, as much World War Three talk is going on, a uh, get ready for your dollar to get ready and collapse and everything moves to digital, man. And Esau Edom finna get ready to come down with great wrath upon you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. I just wanna play the clip. You see? Yep, it says it says conspiracy theorists believe that bloody horses running through London and Big Ben stopping are dark omens signaling the end times. And we see that we're in the end, man. They say four people injured after military horses escape. Hey, people even got hurt during this, man. See, yep, this is the book of uh, Second Timothy, chapter 3, and verse 1. And it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. You see, it said, In the last days perilous times will come. Hey, we're entering into a time like never before. Hey, it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Well, a, a famine is going to kill a lot of you people. World War Three is going to take place. And ultimately, those missiles, nuclear missiles, are going to be shot off toward America to wipe it off the face of the earth, man. And once again, it says, This know also that in the last day, perilous times shall come. And it's going to be so bad that we're going to need Michael the Archangel to stand up for us. It says, The time of the end. Daniel 12 and 1. And it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. You see, it says it's going to be a time such as never was. So a hey, Jacob's trouble is going to surpass slavery, man. And like they show on roots, niggas on plantations getting whipped. Jacob's trouble is going to surpass that because that was one of the most uh, brutal times for the nation of Israel, man. It's going to surpass the trail of tears, how Esau even came over here and killed off damn near the whole northern tribe. It's going to surpass that, man. The Lord, to the point the Lord is going to have apparitions out here, newly created creatures, people starving to death, eating their children, killing one another for the lack of bread. You see, until you see his elect man out here uh, with spiritual powers, man. This is going to be a, a time like never before, man. That's how bad it's going to be out here. So the Lord is going to have to lift up the standard on certain of his men to get them uh, spiritual powers. Uh, to be able to fight back and defend themselves, man. Continuing on, it says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. See, only the elect is going to be delivered. That's why we warn you of these things because, hey, we want to get the blood off our hands and Lord willing be of that number to be saved in the times to come. 
In the book of Revelation, chapter 6, I'm going to jump down to verse 3, starting off. And it says, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And it's talking about who? Uh, Esau, Edom, the Edomites. You see? He said power was given to him that sat there on. He said to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto, unto him a great sword. You see? He said that they should kill one another. Hey, uh, you got uh, these Russians versus this Ukraine. All those are Edomites. You got... um. America versus Russia, man. Edomite versus Edomite, man. And that great sword is what those nuclear weapons that they have created. You see? Continuing on. Verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And you just saw a black horse. On the, on the video and like they said they think these are signs an omen of bad times the end times and it says and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and you know the black horse is going into the, uh, the darkest time that ever happened to our nation we went into slavery and going to the word balances G2218 it says a yoke you see, bondage, slavery. You see, and it's the time we were brought up here on those slave ships, bonded, I mean, chained up, had yokes on us, and they were separating families. You see, hey, we get ready and come into another dark time, man. The time of Jacob's trouble. Like I said, a time like never before. You see, verse 6, and it says, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine and i want to read in nlt and it says and i heard a voice from among the four living beings say a loaf of wheat bread or three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay and they're going to that hyperinflation huh all these are the dark times that's up ahead, man. There's going to be a shortage on everything, and that's going to cause everything to go up. You see, uh, the milk got the bird flu in it. You see? That can cause prices to rise because it's going to, all that milk got to go. And then there's going to be a shortage on it. And now it's a shortage on it to make the price go up. Supply and demand. You see? And it says a loaf of bread costs a day's pay. And you see, and certain people, and you see the price of everything going up now. You go to the store, you get two, three items, and that's damn near a hundred dollars. You see, and that's the average person probably day's pay, eighty to a hundred dollars. Well, everything's gonna be so high, it, it's not gonna even make sense, man. Continuing on, verse seven, and it says, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. These damn Edomites, man. And it says, And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, and that's America. It says, To kill with sword. And that's going to happen, by the way, uh, those martial law troops coming in, throwing you in the concentration camps, World War Three. you see? And just your average Edomite just ready to get off on the nigga when all hell break loose. Your neighbor. And it says, and with hunger. And like the, uh, the brother died what I was going to yesterday, that man-made famine, man. He said he was given um, power over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword. You see, and Esau, you know, his sword varies, man, from his from a gun to a knife to you know that jump shot. 
You see? And then it says, and with hunger, that man made famine. He says, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. You see? And like the elder was going into, back in the day, how they used to uh, scrap uh, Jacob and time the different horses, and they'll smack the horse and rip you from limb to limb, man. Sicking dogs on you. Hey, these are times we're coming in, man. Where it's going to be so bad that we're going to need help from on high. From Yahweh Shai and Micah the Archangel, man. You see? That's why we're warning you. Because, hey, this sign, hey World War Three is on the way. The mark of the beast is here. It just hasn't been uh, made mandatory. And all hell from to get ready to break loose real soon. But when all hell break loose, hey, that's... Um, the signs, these are the signs that our Lord Yahweh Shai is on the way, man. He's going to appear in the clouds with the host of heaven hey, to, to destroy Esau, Edom, and deliver his elect and burn America off the face of the earth. Jump note to Revelation 6 and verse 1. And it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it was the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. You see, and this Yahweh Shai returning on his chair. You see, like I said, that white horse. He had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. Because he's going to conquer everything. Every knee shall bow. You see? Like he had that white horse with the blood all over. Hey, there was a beautiful picture, man. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, and verse 1. Like I said, Yahweh Shai is going to return on that white horse, that chariot. And it says, Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. It says, Wherefore art thou red and thine apparel? Like that all white horse had all that blood on him. You see, that's how Yahweh Shai finna come, man. It says, Wherefore art thou red and thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. It says, I have trodden the wine press alone. Of the people, there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. Hey, so Yahweh Shai, hey, he's not coming to give out hugs and kisses. He's coming to kill, man. Hey, and we're here to warn you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, repent. Or you're going to get caught up in the judgment that the Lord has set forth for Esau, Edom, the so-called white boy. If you don't want to repent and you want to continue to follow after this white boy, hey, you're going to be a part of this uh, trying down, man. You see? And it says, for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeem is come. You see? So, hey. It say for the day of vengeance is in his heart, man. Hey, this is what Yahweh Shai constantly thinking about. You see? Returning. And he's going to set this place in righteousness, man. But it's going to be a lot of bloodshed at first. It's, uh, Book of Revelations, chapter 14. Mm, I start at verse 19. It says, And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of the Most High. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridle. He says, by the space of a thousand and six hundred 
four loans. Hey, that's how much blood is going to be shed here, man. It says to the horse's bridle. How I just had that blood all up to the horse's chest. Hey, that was a beautiful illustration. And like the elder, he goes into a, you know, your house shot chair. And he was going to how, how those mushroom clouds going to go up, man. That's going to be a beautiful. America is going to be a beautiful work of art when those missiles get dropped off over here, man. And Lord willing, we be able to elect to be on the chairs to watch it be destroyed, man. To watch those bombs go off over here, man. Because once that take place, Yahweh Shai is going to take over the earth, man, and rule everything in righteousness. You see? Matter of fact, we we'll close it out on this. Because it's going to be a, a great destruction to come. Then uh, the earth will be beautified. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, and verse 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. By the way, by the way of those missiles being dropped. You see? First and foremost, Jacob trouble. And a lot of blood is going to be shed. Then ultimately, it's going to uh, climax to the missiles dropping over here in America. That's going to be that day of doom, man. You say, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And the beginning of the immortality for to come. Wherein corruption is past, intemperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. You see, so once the day of doom comes, once America is wiped off the face of the earth, a corruption is going to be at an end, and the elect and the, uh, will, will uh, be immortals, man. The nation of Israel will no longer have to die. You see, two thirds will be uh, melted here in America, but once they come back through the loins of the elect, hey, the our nation is going to be immortals, man. Corruption is going to be passed away. Everybody's going to worship your how about Shem al Shai. You're not going to be out, out here praying to Jesus, Buddha, Allah, yourself, the universe, none of that. Everybody will pray until the one and only powers, your how about Shem al Shai, man. And it says, then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed. Esau, Edom, is going to be over with for him. He's going to be a servant. And after he served his thousand years, the, the white boy, he's going to get burnt out the face of the earth. And the rest of the heathens, they're just going to get their land back and they're going to pay tribute. And it says, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. The nation of Israel will never be oppressed again by another heathen on the face of the earth, man. It's going to be beautiful for our nation. But the destruction must come first. And we're here to warn you of that. So repent and return back into your house by the Shah so you don't get caught up in the judgment of America, man. Because everybody can see that we're in the last days, we're at the end, but nobody knows what to do. And the Lord has his prophet set up to tell you what to do and in the times to come. Repent and hope in his mercy. So, hey, Lord willing, this video is edifying to you, brothers and sisters. I want to end it off by giving our praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chakadash. Double honors to all the apostles and elders, great millstone, who we learned the truth from. A shalom to the Holy Lake.